Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all well. This is Lifestyle Critic where we break down movies and TV shows into their core elements. And in this video we are going to be reviewing Chaos Walking, which is a dystopian science fiction action thriller adventure movie based on Patrick Ness's Chaos Walking franchise. And this movie in particular was from the first movie within that franchise called The Knife of Never Letting Go. Now this movie was in development hell for a very long time with constant delays and then they delayed it even further as they had to do some reshoots and they were waiting for Daisy Ridley to finish with The Rise of Skywalker and for Tom Holland to finish with Spider-Man Far From Home as when they showed it in test screenings it was pretty poorly received. Now I'm really intrigued to find out why was this poorly received and what did the reshoots actually entail. I am guessing that they just changed the ending of this movie and it's a real shame with this film as it has an excellent cast, a pretty intriguing plot and premise. I just feel like the execution was just playing it really really safe and they really just could have pushed it a lot further than they did. But unfortunately, ultimately, this movie was a bit of a box office failure as it only made $20 million against a $100 million budget and so Lionsgate, the producers of it, are now writing it off, which pretty much means that unfortunately the sequel and the planned third movie are probably not going to see the light of day, which is a real shame, but you know, either way, I cannot wait to break down Chaos Walking for you in this movie review. So from a storyline point of view, the premise of this film is actually really, really interesting. So it's set in the future, and humankind have gone onto a new planet, which has a really interesting condition whereby all of the men in this planet you can see exactly what they're thinking and you can hear exactly what they're thinking as well in these thought bubble type things called the noise. Now one day a character called Viola is entering the planet and she crash lands and is the sole survivor from her particular ship. She enters this town where there is a major and all of the men along with the major are now after this Viola character and she is trying to survive and is on the run along with another character called Todd who is played by Tom Holland and the two of these characters are trying to survive and trying to find out a lot more about what's happening and to find out a lot more about the past as well. Now there are loads of interesting aspects in this film such as the cat and mouse type chase sequences so all of the people from the previous town are now trying to find Viola and Todd. All of the noise aspects in this film is absolutely fascinating in terms of really seeing exactly and hearing exactly what people are thinking and feeling as well. And I do feel like they've used the noise really, really well in this movie. The romance between the Daisy Ridley character and the Tom Holland character is really, really interesting as well. I feel like they explore that relationship in quite a lot of detail and is really amusing in terms of what the Todd character is thinking about the Viola character. And obviously she knows this as she is able to see and hear all of it. They then go to a new town and the new townspeople are very different to the previous townspeople so I thought from that aspect it was really really interesting and the world building that they do in this movie is absolutely brilliant and there's also some aliens in this world as well. They would have explored the aliens a lot further in the third installment which is just a real shame as that would have been a really interesting aspect as well. However there are a few annoyances in this movie as well such as the fact that they could have done a lot more with the noise, they could have done a lot more with the premise the character motivations are pretty much non-existent. The Major and all of the other men in the previous town are after these characters, but they really didn't fuel that with understanding why they are after them. They do also explore why there are no women in the previous town and why they are in the other town. And that's another aspect that they do touch on, but they could have done so much more with it. And some of the terrain that these characters are running around in just feels very repetitive, very, very similar. I mean, this movie was a bit of an origin movie it was trying to start a franchise and from that point of view it's successful but they just could have done so much more with it in Chaos Walking. So from a cast and characters point of view, like I said earlier on, there is a brilliant cast in this movie and they just make the viewing experience so brilliant as they just do such a good job in terms of playing all of their parts, they just do it so well and you're really connected with all of the different characters and they just do such a good job. So let's break them down one by one. So first up we have Tom Holland, who is playing the lead character, Todd. He's really, really innocent. He is a farmer and you are learning a lot more about this world along with this character. So he's definitely the audience's eyes and ears in this movie. And he's just a really, really cool character. He's never seen a girl before in his whole life. So that aspect is really, really interesting. And because everything is on display in terms of all of his thoughts and all of his feelings, 
you can really connect with this character and also seeing other characters being able to see this, some characters trying to abuse this, it's just a really, really interesting aspect. From this character's point of view, next up we have Daisy Ridley, who's a co-lead in this film as well as the character of Viola. At points, she is a little bit patronising towards the Todd character, but she's definitely able to hold her own and definitely carries the movie alongside Tom Holland, and she is a brilliant action hero in this movie as well. She's obviously learned a lot from her Star Wars days, and she's definitely applying all of it in this movie really, really well. We also have the dog companion, of Todd as well. We've seen this setup happening quite a lot now in similar movies such as I Am Legend and Love and Monsters whereby the lead character has a dog companion. So you've seen this before but it is really nice to see it again in this movie. We then have Mads Mikkelsen who does such a good job in terms of playing the lead villain in this film as David Prentice. I mean Mads Mikkelsen is so good in terms of playing a really ruthless, menacing and very terrifying lead villain character however I would say that like I said before he's not as well developed as he could have been and you really don't understand his motivation enough for you to really feel intimidated by him but that being said from what he has to work with he does a really really good job we then have Nick Jonas in this film as well who plays the Prentice's son character he's a bit of a rival to the Tom Holland Todd character and I'm sure that they would have explored this a lot further in subsequent installments but as far as this movie goes you can kind of see the two of them having a bit of a rivalry in the beginning and then finally we also have Cynthia Arrivo playing a character called Hillary who is also the major of her particular town and you can really see the difference in terms of that character leading that town and the Mads Mikkelsen character leading the previous town so from a cast and characters point of view they are absolutely brilliant in this movie. So from a visuals point of view, I've kind of got mixed feelings with this movie. On the one hand, all of the noise aspects of this film looks really, really cool. I feel like they used that aspect of the film really, really great. They could have pushed it a little bit more sure, but I feel like they used it well in terms of seeing people's illusions, seeing how you can use this in an innovative way, both in terms of it being a bit of a hindrance for certain characters, whilst also being a really interesting tool for certain characters as well. On the other hand though, I do feel like some of the visuals look really, really cheap and very repetitive. I and mean, if they're trying to make a bit of a blockbuster franchise, then they really should have done a lot more with this department. But you know, that being said, you are able to be immersed into this world of this new planet, this new way of interacting with different people. And so from all of that point of view, you are in the world of chaos walking. So from a comparison point of view, like I said before, they were trying to be like the other big juggernaut franchises such as the Hunger Games and the Divergent series. Unfortunately, I don't think Chaos Walking is able to be as good as those are and I don't think it's going to be able to have a success in terms of having a sequel and a third one or maybe even a fourth one given the performance of this one. But I would also compare the actual storyline and the aesthetic and the way in which everything is happening in this movie to other movies such as the Maze Runner franchise the Giver, After Earth, and also The Island as well. So from a comparison point of view, you can actually compare Chaos Walking to a lot of other movies within those genres as well, but I definitely think Chaos Walking is able to be its own thing as well. So overall, I have to say, you know, with Chaos Walking, I agree that they could have and should have done a lot more with the premise and with the characters and with the world and all of that sort of thing, but I didn't really hate this movie. It's a shame that I didn't do a lot better because it would have been such a really interesting franchise and a really great movie sequence and I'm just intrigued to see whether or not they're going to continue it in a different way such as with streaming instead of I just feel like you know they had such a brilliant cast and just so much opportunity. The Chaos Walking book series franchise is so great and it was just such a delight to see it on the big screen and I just wish it could have continued but you know for all of those reasons I'm going to give this movie a solid 5 out of 10. I'd love to hear what you think, so please let me know in the comment section below. Otherwise, I look forward to seeing you in my next video.